Today we're going to use Formica laminate to add some DIY character to a classic barn door that we've cut to size from medium density fiberboard or MDF. Barn doors are in style and can be a functional space saver in any room. And while real wood barn doors can look great, they have some limitations like cost, weight, and design variety. Formica laminate has a wide variety of realistic looking and feeling wood patterns to choose from. It's lightweight, affordable, and very durable. Plus, it's something you can do yourself. To complete this project, you'll need a flat, sturdy surface to work on, a drop cloth, safety glasses, dust mask, and gloves, MDF cut to the desired door size, electric detail sander with 150 to 220 grit sandpaper, formica laminate in your chosen pattern and color, measuring tape and straight edge, permanent fine tip marker, jigsaw with fine tooth down cut blade, two inch masking tape, lint free cloth, solvent based contact cement spray adhesive, router with ball bearing piloted bit, dowel rods or indexing sticks, J roller, a fine tooth mill file, 100% acetone, and barn door hardware of your choice. Before beginning, read the adhesive precautions and directions and cover your floor with the drop cloth. Use the detail sander to sand all the surfaces of the MDF door. Then wipe off any dust or loose particles with a damp cloth and let the surfaces dry. This will help ensure a good bond. Next, carefully measure the edges in front of the MDF and write down your measurements. The back of the door will measure the same as the front. You'll need a flat, sturdy surface larger than your laminate to work on. Mark the measurements on the laminate, but add 3 eighths to 1 half inch on all sides so you'll have enough coverage. We'll trim the excess off later. We're using the wide planked walnut design by Formica Group. We'll start by cutting and bonding the top and bottom edge strips. Always put your edge strips on first, beginning with the opposite side. Place masking tape along your cut line to avoid chipping during cutting. And redraw your cut line on top of the masking tape. Then, cut the laminate face up with a jigsaw using a fine tooth down cut blade. Make sure you have someone to help hold down the laminate. When your edges are cut, remove the tape and wipe all the surfaces with a dry, lint-free cloth to remove any dust. Dust can show up as a dimple or bump when the laminate is applied. Now, spray the solvent-based contact cement on an edge piece and on the corresponding door edge. Follow the adhesive manufacturer's guidelines and make sure you have full coverage. Let the adhesive get tacky. When you test it, it shouldn't come off on your hand. Apply each edge strip by hand, working from the middle out. There should be overhang on all sides. Use a J-roller to apply pressure to bond the laminate to the door edge. Be careful not to crack the overhanging edges when rolling. After the edge strip is applied, trim the excess material using a router with a ball bearing piloted bit, always cutting at a right angle. This type of router has a bearing guide so you can adjust the bit to the thickness of the laminate for a nice flush cut. Now, feel for any rough or proud edges, and file, held at an angle and using an even, consistent motion to gently smooth out any proud or rough edges. Keep in mind, it's really easy to over file, so make sure you only file until all the edges are smooth to the touch. Use the sander if there are any areas of overspray on the door. Now, Use a clean, dry, lint-free cloth to dust off any particles from trimming and sanding, and follow the same steps for the other edges. Just like when cutting the edge pieces, measure and mark the laminate for the door front 3 eighths to 1 half inch larger than you need on all sides. Place masking tape on the laminate along your cut line to avoid chipping during cutting, and cut with the jigsaw. Then, remove the tape, clean the laminate, and spray the laminate, making sure you have full coverage. Clean the door surface with a dry cloth. Then, spray the door surface with adhesive, making sure you have full coverage. When the adhesive is tacky, place your dowel rods 10 to 12 inches apart on the door surface and put the laminate on top of the dowel rods. Be sure to align the surfaces so the overhang is even and parallel with the door. Now, slide the dowel rods out, starting in the middle, smoothing the surface with your hands as you go. Once all the dowel rods are out, 
apply pressure with the J-roll. When you use the J-roller on the door, again, be careful not to put too much pressure near the overhanging edges or they might break. Now trim with the router and gently file the top edges if needed until they are flush with the edge strips. Then flip the door over and follow the same steps for the back. Once the back is complete, use acetone to remove any overspray or excess adhesive seeping out. The laminate will be completely dry within 24 to 48 hours. Oh, we're almost done. Almost. Every barn door needs a track to slide on. Tracks are sold in many styles and finishes, so you can choose one that fits your style and budget. Follow the manufacturer's installation instructions for your chosen hardware. If you add handles, you can use a full handle on the track side, but will need a recessed handle on the other side so it will clear the wall when you slide the door open. Wow. Right? I love how this turned out. For Micah Laminate, turned a space-saving barn door into a beautiful accent piece. Find out more at Formica.com.